Let's look at all of these emails, the emails that would go on to eventually take down Jarrett Lysick and Adventures with Purpose. Over the past four years, Jarrett Lysick has shot to fame as a man who leads a team of divers known as Adventures with Purpose. They've been on Dr. Phil, his star was rising, many people like me believed in him, thought he was really doing a good work. March, thank you for making it over. I heard that uh, Plunder has uh, said several nice things about us. We appreciate uh, all of you coming over and watching what it is we're doing over here. Plunder, Plunder's on here. Uh, thank you very much. If you've not yet seen Plunder's channel, go check her out. Thank you for uh, all you do and everything. Absolutely. Well, now we're going to read these emails in order an email exchange between Jarrett Lysick and his female cousin. Just checking the Utah courts system right now for any updates. The latest I see is what still stands. Two charges, first degree felonies, wherein his cousin brought charges against Jarrett. I'm going to call it for harming a child. They are very serious allegations and Jarrett is next due in a Utah court, at least via WebEx, to appear on November 30th to face these charges. Well, what started all of this? How did these allegations end up with indictments? We're going to take a look at the email exchange wherein Jared appears to admit to his crime and how he seemingly gaslights his cousin and how these very words could represent Jared's downfall. Many, if not all of the team that worked with Adventures with Purpose left. There's been a plethora of videos from all of these different channels showing why they left, the different emotions that went with it. Let's start and talk about it from the beginning to end. First off, I want to prove the validity and veracity of the email exchange I'm about to read. There is a diver named Exploring with Nug, and he stated that Jared admitted to writing these emails via a text exchange with Nug in the video titled, Making a Public Statement on Adventures with Purpose. Exploring with Nug says these exact words. The whole, the proof thing is where I'm like the emails. That's all the proof I needed to be, you know, convinced that this is not fabricated. And on top of that, um, somebody also said, well, these emails could be fabricated. You know, somebody could have wrote these. Jared, Jared couldn't, you know, he didn't write these, stuff like that. Nug continued, um, but Jared has already said um, that his official statement is the uh, emails back and forth between him and his cousin. Nug said that he reached out to Jared and Jared replied, when all of this brouhaha about Jarrett potentially being not the nice guy that he portrays on his Adventures with Purpose YouTube channel. Nug said, uh, I got that text from him because I first reached out to him and I was like, hey, I heard about what's going on. You know, I want you to know because this was before I knew anything and I thought he was my friend, so, I told, you know, I sent him a text. Nug said, I was like, hey, I heard what's going on, dude. I got your back if you need anything. You know, that was me, my first reaction, because I thought maybe I had a friend getting railroaded. But that's me jumping the gun too fast before I knew what the hell was going on. And I was dumb on my part, but he did write back. Very generic message saying, quote, my official statement is what I wrote back and forth to my cousin that's public on Reddit so anybody could read these. Now that we have more proof that could stand up in court, Nug could be a witness, potentially. Those words admitted publicly on YouTube, wherein I believe Nug, he says Jarrett Lysick emailed him and said, that's my public statement. These emails he's referencing, which I'm about to read, that's something that would help the victim, the survivor. I will just call her Jarrett's cousin. Some people are calling her the hero. That's something that could help her in a court of law, again, establish the fact that Jarrett it did indeed write these emails. Along with other digital data forensics, let's hope by now the AWP servers have been subpoenaed or the mail server, however this exchange took place, 
so they can verify that it did come from Adventures with Purpose, support emails, that no one else was responding besides Jared. Let's take a look. First off, let's talk about how this whole thing kind of started. Adventures with Purpose, of course, began with Jarrett Lysick back in 2018, a diver, seemingly under good intentions, just wanting to dive, clean up the waterways, all those types of things. He was finding phones and glasses and money and wallets and everything underwater. Eventually finding objects would turn into finding human remains and vehicles underwater. So his mission became a lot more important mission. And that mission has resulted in more than 25 human souls, at least their remains being recovered. So Adventures with Purpose has done good work. However, it does not negate what his cousin's accusations are charging here. It started off at the beginning of 2022 as Adventures with Purpose continued to grow in viewers, millions of subscribers, lots of members. I became a member recently during the Kylie Rodney case and I just canceled my membership yesterday. I've been watching them at least since 2018 or 2019, you know, given a super chat, bragged about them to all my viewers, fought for them to try and get the Kylie Rodney reward money. Plenty of us were fooled. Again, there is good work they have done. Thank God they've been able to give answers to some grieving families, but let's look at the truth. Not everyone was a fan of Adventures with Purpose. It wasn't the emails of the cousin that first went viral. They were her words posted on Facebook. She was warning others, you might not want to let Jared all in your homes, around your kids and such. She wrote on Facebook, please beware. I had no idea until recently when I had the unfortunate chance of coming across a video of my childhood vapist I will call him, you can read the words on the screen. Jarrett Lysick, my cousin, yes, my own flesh and blood, and I wasn't his only family victim. And honestly, who knows how many others there are out there that aren't a part of our family. Due to his diving group, Adventures with Purpose, this man is regarded as a hero and an angel, and he is invited into people's homes with welcome, loving arms. He has been through the systems, CPS, the Mormon church, therapies, and so many more as you'll be able to tell from his writing. But I do know for a fact that he did not start with me and he didn't stop with me either. He, at one point, like you will read, did verbally admit to my mother, and she redacted her name, that he had messed with me, I'll say. And you can read on the screen the words I'm changing. Obviously skimming over the more horrific parts like his attempted Gomorrahizing of her daughter directly above her, my grandfather and my grandmother's heads, by the way, and the fact that the age of 9, 10, he gave me a yeast infection from vaping me and I had no idea that I had to go through the trauma of my mother and my grandmother finding white stuff in my panties and treating me horribly and questioning me and punishing me for the problem. When he told her, she started to cry, hugged him, hugged him and told him that she forgave him. She never turned him into the police and I was never got any form of help or anybody to talk about it. We went out to go travel on the carnival, which made me unavailable to be anywhere for more than a week, which meant that I couldn't say anything to anyone. My own mother protected him and never even talked to me about it other than to tell me that she had been blank and her story was worse than mine. He finally admitted it in writing because he and the family are all very sure that the statutes of limitations have passed and he's safe so he can, or so he thought, I guess. But just so you are aware and can keep your daughter safe, be very careful around this man. His business is in Bend, Oregon, and as sad as it makes me, that's where that part ends. Let's get to the actual emails now, starting February 4th. This is what Jared's, I'll call her the survivor cousin, wrote to AWP, February 4th, to support. 
Do you feel better as a person doing things like this? Does this make you feel like less of a child messing monster parading around in human skin? I believe what she's referring to and a lot of people have noted perhaps Jared's altruistic image of being so helpful and helping all these families recover their lost loved ones, usually in bodies of water. Could it have been he took on this role because he was feeling so much guilt from what he allegedly did in his past? So I believe that's her reference here. Do you feel better as a person doing stuff like this? There is no forgiveness for what you did to me in my home in Utah, grandma and grandpa's house in Las Vegas, and right above grandma and grandpa's head in their very own truck. The actual probable cause affidavit lists what actually she alleges happened with Jarrett pinning her down, her being only nine or 10, him being 17. Now, even though it allegedly happened twice in Utah, I'm not sure how many times in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Nevada, apparently the statute of limitations has expired, but the two times alleged in Utah, the statute of limitations has not expired. There is none for child crimes like this. So that's why there are two counts of harming a child in Utah, felony counts Jared has been indicted and charged with. She continued, the rest of the family is just about as much to blame as you because they didn't turn you in when they knew better and I was just a child and did not know better and yet you're still welcomed at family get-togethers. Or like my grandfather's funeral, while in the parking lot getting ready to get out of the car and attend, I seen your face and became so violently ill, I couldn't even attend. I had to drive down the street to the CVS and watch it all via Zoom. All these people may be calling you a hero and saying that you're doing such great things, but we both know the truth about you and you're obviously not ashamed of your past, but I also am not ashamed of my past. And I have a voice and I use it as much as I possibly can. Your secrets are not hidden. So that appears to be the first email she sent Jared. On February 4th, there is an email that came back to her from the AWP support team. This is what Jared allegedly wrote his cousin back. I am so very sorry for the things we cannot change. That sounds like that AA maxim, God grant me the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. And Jarrett went on to seemingly immediately shift the blame onto generational curses and family problems. He wrote, it is unfortunate that the Lysic and Juhas, Juhas lineage experience the ish that you, I, and many of the other cousins were brought into. Like yourself, I was once a victim by multiple people, both in and out of the family. It is unfortunate when families like ours experience messing. So immediately Jared takes on a victim role with her without necessarily taking enough culpability into what he allegedly did. He continued, many of us cousins got together to acknowledge what had happened in our youth. Youth is a word he'll use often. Many of us cousins got together to acknowledge what had happened in our youth and made a pact to put an end to it and to protect our children from anything like that ever happening to them. So immediately he has switched himself from victim to hero, never really taking on the role of perpetrator in these emails at all. He's a victim like her, he states, and then he says, Look, all of us cousins got together and we made this pact that even though all this bad stuff happened to us, we were gonna put an end to it and never do that to our children. And now we're better and we're protecting our children. He then goes on to seemingly acknowledge that her complaints are valid. He wrote, I myself tried to apologize to you and to have an open conversation with you about it, to answer any questions you may have. By him stating it that way, he has placed himself in a statue of authority. 
you know, I tried to apologize to you and have an open conversation and answer any questions you might have. You don't see a blanket, dear Lord, forgive me. Oh God, I'm so sorry. You see a lot of excuses and gaslighting here. This very statement reminds me of what turned a person off, a newbie Christian going to a Bible study. She went to the Bible study and the guy there said, okay, he had his Bible and he's like, who has questions as if he were the authority on the Bible instead of them let's read the Bible and discover what it means together his thing was oh maybe I'm super Christian and who has any questions and that's what Jared's words reminded me of there he went on to write the first time that I apologized to you I am sorry for the way that it was handled for I was under the impression that your mother knew and that I felt it was appropriate at that time to have the conversation with both of you. I did not mean to embarrass you or catch you off guard. So at some point, obviously, Jared must have been overcome by guilt or looking to share his burdens or unleash his burdens, unburden himself. Maybe once again, play the good guy role. Maybe he really did feel a crisis of conscience and he wanted to apologize to her. I will admit this is more than some perpetrators give their victims. It doesn't make it right, but some perpetrators, they never admit to anything. I keep thinking of R. Kelly and Bill Cosby. You will see some of the similarities in that R. Kelly was also abused as a youth. And unfortunately, some people go on instead of overcoming that abuse, they go on to then harm others in the same way. Some are able to stop, thank God, and admit their wrongdoing others turn on their victims. Others say to their victims, that never happened. What are you talking about? But obviously at some point, Jared sat down with the cousin and her mom. And again, he's saying, I'm sorry for the way it was handled. I thought your mother knew. I felt it was appropriate at that time to have that conversation with both of you. Almost like I tried to be the good guy. I tried to admit my wrongs, but you will see as we go throughout these emails, just how much it appears Jarrett might be trying to change the facts and lessen his culpability by claiming he was a younger person when this happened. Jarrett continued, the second time that I tried was not to clear my own conscience, but to help you heal and help with any struggles you may have been having as many of us had to learn how to overcome and move forward. You essentially told me to go F myself and told me how I had embarrassed you the first time around. I am sorry. So Jared is saying, look, I tried the first time with you and your mom. I tried the second time. It wasn't to clear my own conscience, but it was to help you heal and help with any struggles you may be having. Now, I don't know how appropriate that is for the perpetrator, the alleged perpetrator of a crime against a child to posture himself as the one who can help her heal. Jared's cousin is going to give him a good piece of her mind and let him know, look, if you're really serious, this is how you can help me heal. You can walk into a police station and admit what you're admitting now. But again, Jared is putting the blame on her. You essentially told me to go F myself and told me how I had embarrassed you the first time around. Well, he doesn't tell the complete story like the cousin does. Apparently that time when Jared sat down with this cousin and her mom and admitted his wrongdoings, I can almost see in that affable nature, that, oh, shucks, good guy type of mask that I fell for, many people may have fallen for, some people seemingly are still falling for, of course, he is still innocent until proven guilty or confession in a court of law. Imagine the mom getting a confession from Jared. I don't know how old he was, but saying, this is what I did to your daughter. And the mom hugging him and crying and not getting any help for her daughter and telling her daughter, well, what happened to me was worse. Pretty sad. Jared wrote, my understanding is that other cousins also have tried to have the same conversations with you. We are now all adults and it is healthy for us to acknowledge and address those unfortunate circumstances from our past in our child and adolescent years. Language 
experts would have a field day with these emails. First off, Jared is saying, my understanding is that other cousins have also tried to have the same conversations with you. Almost inferring like, look, other people have tried too and you are just the problem. It's you that's the problem. It's almost like he's saying, why are you still bringing this up? And it's not time that heals. That's what some people get wrong. This may have happened 30 years ago, but if a traumatic event such as this happens to a nine-year-old girl being forced into intercourse course with her 17 year old almost an adult cousin male cousin that is traumatic according to her it happened more than once it's something that won't necessarily just go away oh i've forgotten about it victims can be triggered they can have traumatic flashbacks it can cause her life if you go listen to her emails on different channels like ikat mill it can cause a person's life to take a horrible turn it's a slippery slope. It can change the trajectory of a person's life. That's why it's important. That's why the statute of limitations on child crimes like this, thankfully, have been removed. So victims can have their true healing by seeing their perpetrators punished accordingly. But he is saying, look, other cousins have tried to talk to you about this, basically. We are all now adults, and it's healthy for us to acknowledge and address those unfortunate circumstances. So what a euphemism, almost like it's an unfortunate circumstance. He makes it sound like a tree fell on their house or a storm happened or tornado or unfortunate circumstance from our past and in our child and adolescent years. He's very big on making it sound as if he was a lot younger than he was. Of course, the younger you are, the less culpability you would seem to have. He continued, while there is a lot of ish that has happened throughout my own life personally, from messing, abandonment, growing up in foster care, and any other ish along the way, I would not change a thing, for it has made me who I am today. This is not to in any way take away from the horrible things that Jared obviously Obviously experienced, his cousin experienced, perhaps others in the family experienced. He turns it into a self-focus. He turns it back to a lot of ish has happened throughout my own life personally and I have read about abandonment and growing up in foster care. So there is a way to feel a lot of sympathy and empathy for him, for the little boy of what he experienced, but it doesn't appear that the man has grown up and addressed those little boy hurts and issues in the proper way. Instead, it seems like it's turned into this narcissistic, oh shucks type of mask of almost like, how can I get over on people and make them believe I'm this good guy and let me chase money. There's a lot of bad things coming out about Jared, but the fact that he said, I would not change a thing for it has made me who I am today. Would he not change the acts he perpetrated allegedly on this little nine or 10 year old girl? Jared wrote, I cannot apologize for others for anything that has happened to you in your life, but I have done my best to acknowledge directly with you my own mistakes. Well, maybe partially. It's like partial apology and as you'll see as it goes further into trying to get facts it appears like the acknowledgement isn't necessarily completely there he wrote I hold no secrets as to this with my own parents with grandma and grandpa with your mother aunt and my own wife and my children what exactly has Jared told his entire family has he said the truth of what actually happened or did he give them a semi-version of truthy truth, alternate facts? He wrote, I have even discussed publicly about my situation and the unfortunate ish that has happened within families. So he's alluding to the fact that he's been an open book, but I guarantee many of us, his followers, did not know this. We did not know this until he was actually indicted and we see these charges in writing. Do we pinpoint it to the Lysak and Juhas lineage or do we pinpoint it to Mormonism? I do not have an answer. Another other way of not accepting responsibility. He does not take it upon himself to say, yeah, 
I was 17. I took you as a little girl and forced you to do stuff you should have known nothing about. I am completely sorry. He never takes the onus upon himself. He's blaming his family, his own abused history. He's blaming the lineage. He's blaming Mormonism. He wrote, there is no way for me to understand the hatred and resentment that you must have for me over three decades later. Again, it's like a left-handed slight, left-handed compliment, or he's getting in these little digs and burns and shade all over the place. There's no way for me to understand the hatred and resentment that you must have for me over three decades later. In other words, he's saying in a way, look, it's been more than three decades. Aren't you over this yet? I heard about your driving into the cemetery a few weeks later. Trust me, had I known that you had a desire to be there and that I was the only reason keeping you away, I would have 100% given up my time to do what I could to avoid the ceremony so that you would feel comfortable and have your time with grandma and the rest of the family. Once again, seemingly playing the good guy role saying, oh, I would have given up my time with the family and grandpa had I known that, you know, the very sight of me was making you sick. It is your decision and your choice if you ever want to accept my apology. I have made peace in my life with all things bad, including this situation. If you ever want to discuss, I am always available to have that conversation with you either in person or over the phone. Sincerely, Jared. Now, this is where the cousin pulls out all stops and says, look, if you're truly sorry, prove it. February 5th, to AWP. She wrote, if you truly want to apologize, then pay for your actions. Walk into a police station with me and confess your actions. Get it on record and have yourself registered as the SO that you are. My only regret in life was not being as open about you and your abuse to anyone and everyone who would listen like I am now. That is a common thing. A lot of survivors of this type of assault sometimes they don't talk about it right away. I mean, she was only nine or 10. At that age, you don't really know what is what. She may not have even understood what was happening to her. Some child survivors say they knew something was wrong about it, but they don't quite understand. So now over the years, she's gained the strength to talk about it. And it didn't help her to see Jared lauded as this great guy helping find all these victims and such. And I can see how triggering that would be when people who knew him in real life are saying, wait, that doesn't match up with the image that I know. She continued, and turning you into the police like you should have been. So imagine at 17 or whenever the admission was made, if the cousin's mom had marched Jarrett down to the police station, would he have been arrested then? How much time would he have served? Would he be out by now? And would he be more humble? Would that have helped his victim? Knowing that he served time for what he did to her, would it have prevented any others, if there are any other alleged victims from being harmed? She wrote, I don't understand how you can try and get me to sympathize with you and your past issues, not at all. It angers me twice as much to know that not only did you know firsthand the torture you were inflicting upon me because you experienced it yourself. That makes you an even bigger monster than I have had pictured in my mind. Absolutely disgusting. You're an emotional vampire. It is a valid point where I do hate to see people, for example, like R. Kelly, a good example in my mind. I do feel sorry for the little boy he was for what he endured at the hands of others. But then I hate to see again when people like that grow up and instead of just rebuking that and trying to get as much help as possible and turning their lives around, even helping other survivors, they turn around and inflict the same pain on many others, continue the cycle and deny it all. She wrote, I noticed all the therapy terms you used in your message. Typical narcissism at its best. How could somebody ever come to peace with damaging such a young, innocent human being is beyond me proof of a completely broken mind, assuming that there would be any kind of peace after those types of actions or that peace should even be deserved. 
You are a pedophile. Do not act like you were not old enough to know what you were doing to me during the ages that you were. You could have been tried as an adult at that age and should have been. And as to the comments about my life and things that have happened to me, I don't know who or why you're even discussing me, but I can guarantee you that nobody really knows anything because just like your situation, I've kept my mouth shut until recently. And I don't talk to any of the family, despite what other, as you say, cousins have come to you and said. So be a real man and turn yourself in and pay for your crimes or continue to be the small, sad, mental midget that couldn't keep his libido under control and blames it on his past. I thought that was a pretty powerful comeback. Jared wrote back to her, unfortunately your desire to have a 46 year old male live the mistakes of a 12 year old simply is not realistic. Now Jared is going to claim he was 12 years old a couple of times throughout these emails. That's why some people are thinking, Oh, Jared was only 12, give him a break. But the truth will come out according to his survivor, Jared was actually 17. And that's why she wrote, you could have been tried as an adult. As soon as she brought that up and started talking about legal things and walking into a police station, that's when Jared seemingly comes up with this 12 year old age. He wrote, Thank God we are not forever judged for our actions as youth. And I'm grateful that many of us cousins acknowledged and stopped those sins which happened to us and those sins we once committed as a result of grooming. Now, I do agree with him. Thank God we aren't forever judged for our actions. And he again says youth. But see, believing in God and falling on this cross, repenting is everything. That doesn't mean Jared gets to escape consequences. And that's what some people confuse God with. Kind of like, oh, I admitted it to God. That should be good enough. In some instances, situations like this don't turn to a court situation. Sometimes the perpetrator might truly be repentant, has truly turned to God, truly asked for forgiveness, Sometimes the survivor or the victim has truly forgiven that person, not even for the perpetrator's sake, but for their own sake. Sometimes everyone stays quiet. It'll get handled on judgment day. There are a lot of people that have done things that don't end up in a courtroom. But in this instance, I feel like Jared is using God in a way to try and get over. He's saying, thank God we're not forever judged for our actions as youth. So again, he's calling himself a youth. Once again, he turns to the fact that I'm grateful many of us cousins acknowledged and stopped those sins. It's like, look, we admitted it. We got together, we made a pact. It's almost as if he's saying, oh, that should be good enough for you. He's saying the cousins acknowledged and stopped those sins which happened to them and those sins which they once committed as the result of grooming. So again, a lot of blame is placed on what happened to him. He goes on to say, it is healthy for you to now be open and talk about the past. You as a full grown woman in your early forties are to be commended for facing and standing up to those actions which happened to you in your past. He's very condescending. These words are condescending. He's calling her, you're a full grown woman in your early 40s. Kind of like, once again, get over it. He's saying she's to be commended for standing up to these actions which happened to you in your past. Oh, they just happened. Not like I did this bad thing to you. It's like, oh, they just happened in the past. Then he goes on to tell her spread awareness and stop the cycle as we cousins within the family have for our own children and grandchildren. And I, I truly hope that's true. I hope no other children are experiencing this. He wrote, protect your own children and grandchildren as we have to help the world become a better place. Worldly, it's altruistic, he's the hero. All this bad stuff happened to him and the cousins. They got together, they made a pact, but he doesn't directly address, look, when she says, walk into a police station with me, he doesn't address that. He just says, your desire to have a 46 year old male live the mistakes of a 12 year old simply is not realistic, just very condescending. He wrote, we live in a society that acknowledges the mistakes made in the past, accepting those who have proven to change. 
So he's saying, I've changed. You can see my life. I've changed. I'm better now. He wrote, now this is where he gets everyone else involved in his Adventures with Purpose office and really throws them under the bus. My life holds no secrets and everyone in my office feels your pain and has seen this email stream for I don't filter my own emails. Once again, Jared is almost pointing to his cousin and saying, look, you're the crazy one. Everyone in my office has seen these emails. Almost like, what's the big deal? This is from more than 30 years ago. Everyone's seen this email string. I'm an open book. Whereas his Adventures with Purpose teammates are claiming they didn't know this stuff. Jarrett wrote, they know me for the man that I am and not the mistakes of a 12 year old. So that's again, he says 12 year old who learned to recognize the cycle and break the cycle as many of us cousins did. So again, he's making it seem like he was only 12. And even when he was 12, he realized, oh, whatever I did, which he doesn't specify like she will, whatever I did, I learned to recognize as a 12 year old, it was wrong and I broke the cycle. He wrote, you were younger and not yet ready to accept my apology and recognize the steps we made for future generations to protect them. Here he goes, boy, he's calling her younger. At one point he's saying, look, you're a full grown woman in your forties. And now he's kind of dismissing her by saying, you were younger and you weren't yet ready to accept my apology back in those days. So either she's too old and she needs to get over it. Or back in the day, she was too immature and not ready to accept his apology. He wrote, I hope you can one day find forgiveness and peace. And I do hope she can find that, but maybe it's something she will find if Jared is convicted of these charges and if he literally spends some jail time and maybe hopefully she's feeling peace and forgiveness now that a lot of the scales have fallen off of our eyes wherein we thought Jared was this really good guy. This is where Jared tries to end the conversation. Feel free to have any last words for I will not respond to any further attacks as to my character today based upon those actions as a youth. So it's not even like he said, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry I did this to my cousin. This is the truth and I hope we can move past it. He's telling her, feel free to have any last words almost as if he's her executioner or something. For I will not respond to any further attacks as to my character today, based on those actions as a youth. It's just horrible thing to say to a survivor, a victim, as if she's attacking his character by telling her truth. Should you desire, now he's used desire more than once too, so that's pretty telling. Should you desire, you know, it's something that perpetrators sometimes do to their victims, unfortunately, by him talking about her desires, it's almost as if it's like saying she wanted it. That's what it reminds me of. Should you desire a healthy adult conversation as to the past, I'm open to helping you through the acceptance and growth that many of us faced and have dealt with. So again, he's up here. He's healthy, he's accepted his past, he's grown. Well, he's gonna have to accept it now going through this court case, but it's so belittling. Should you desire a healthy adult conversation as to the past? I'm open to helping you through the acceptance. You know, it's not even like, oh Lord, I pray to God and Jesus that we can all get through this and I'm so, 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 so sorry, cousin. No, it's like, he's up here. Should you desire a healthy conversation as to the past? I'm open to helping you through the acceptance and growth that many of us faced and dealt with. We faced and dealt with it. We're over here on the healed side and you're still over there stuck, but look, I can help you come over. And then Jared's going to give her some suggestions on how to heal also. If you have not done so already, I may suggest reaching out to blank and lean on her for guidance as one closer to your age who within the family has gone through this with us. I'm not sure of your relationship with aunt so-and-so or your mother, but I'd suggest leaning on them as well for they experienced much of the same in their own youth. Sincerely, Jared. That could be a good suggestion. 
If it wasn't coupled with such condescending talk prior to it, we know survivors can indeed help each other, but he is leading her to talk to women in the family, including her mother, who allegedly may have buried this whole debacle and protected Jared all these years. You know, this woman will go on to say that now that this case is going to court, a lot of people are having amnesia and forgetting the stuff they knew allegedly Jared did in the past. So we will see who does the right thing in God's name and stands up with this victim, this survivor in court and gives different testimonies as to what they literally saw and heard over the years. The cousin wrote that the person Jared is referring to would be her cousin and she alleges that it is one of his previous victims prior to her. He referred me to her so that way she could help me learn how to forgive him. Not to mention, unprovoked by me, she contacted me a few days after these emails happened and has tried to convince me. But all of this is not as bad as I see it. I think the cousin is trying to say, you know, Jared referred her to this other person who is a cousin who has been through it, victimized, I'm not sure by him or someone else, and allegedly is saying, oh, it's not all as bad as it seems. The final email exchange to AWP features the cousin writing back to Jared with some exact numbers. She wrote, let's do some math here. I was nine or 10 when living in Utah and you forced me to have intercourse with you on my bathroom floor upstairs. You are six or so years older than me. That makes you older than 12. So she's calling out his assertions, his claims that he was only 12. In Las Vegas at grandma and grandpa's house, you were living there and you had your own car, a Volkswagen Beetle and was driving it when it ran. So please stop making it sound as if you were a young child during the time you were messing with me. Maybe you started that young with the others, but as you were not willing to face your wrongdoing in a proper fashion, then that is on you and you alone. Anyone who supports you in your sick delusional fantasy of forgiving yourself for the pain and suffering you caused and willingly and knowingly caused not only a child, but your own family member, but I do appreciate your admitting it all in writing. It was like, gotcha. But Jarrett, maybe he didn't even understand that he had been, that he had got got, <laughs> that he had gotten got. He wrote back, you are welcome. I hope it helps you in your healing process. Jarrett, thanks, AWP support team. Wow. Jared's sister, Jessica, has been more outspoken. She has been helping voice this woman's pain and issues she calls her the hero. Jessica said, feel like I'm living with a target on my back, but I'm used to it. Been standing up for what's right my whole life while others are put on pedestals for doing harm to others. I appreciate the person that is standing up for what's right, as well as I hope this will protect innocent children. We weren't protected, but we are trying to help others. And in case you are not aware, yes, this is my brother changed my name to my real name on Facebook a couple of months ago, so I'd be easier to get a hold of due to this. Hashtag stop Jarrett Lysick. As if the emails weren't bad enough. The emails and these allegations are horrible. They're the worst thing. And other stuff is coming to light now, which is why I believe this is all coming to a head. First, let's read Revelation 4.8. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes all over and within, underneath their wings. And day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all, who was and who is and who is to come the unchanging, eternal God. I don't know if Jared knows God, but I hope he really gets closer to Jesus now. It seems like his whole world is falling apart. And I really believed him and believed in him. And I started hearing rumblings about something on Reddit, like, oh, it's coming, it's coming out. And you know, you'll see that a lot with different people. I didn't know if it were just folks who were jealous of the way Adventures with Purpose grew to such a success. 
But now I see there are real allegations here and I will be following this court case closely. I'm going in there and searching and every time you search, you have to pay money on Utah's court system. Every time you download a document, you have to pay money, but it's okay because I want to see what happens here. I'm no longer a member of Adventures with Purpose. I feel sorry for leading people there. I know some people still believe in them. I know some people still believe in Jared. And I do disagree in terms of the cousin saying, there's no forgiveness ever for anything like this. Well, no, there is forgiveness. It has to be real. Jesus died for all of us and rose again. And so that's where we differ. I just hope, I hope everyone can come to a deeper belief, a belief in God, in Jesus and be healed. There's been a lot of drama. There was like a million dollar GoFundMe that the cousin didn't put up, but now it's down. And some people are claiming, oh, it's just a money grab. But I think all of this is coming out now for a reason. It's not only these emails and the very serious felony charges that Jared faces, but folks are coming out even more. And I really owe an apology to Sam Sam, the adventure man, because I kind of, I watched his video before and part of me didn't want to believe it. He was with Jared, one of those volunteering for years. And according to Sam Sam, he asked Jared for a salary and that's when Jared ended their relationship. Sam Sam, the adventure man's son, Kyler Jen comes out and he's speaking about his horrible experiences that caused him to just leave one day and all these allegations of Jared's alleged money grubbing nature, taking money from people. And now that people are digging more into how did Jared buy that $1.2 million home in July of 2022, all the while through his videos, if you watched any of them, there's a lot of, you know, crying broke in a way like, oh my goodness, this is so expensive. And it is an expensive venture, but money's for those trailers and everything. Now I'm asking myself, did our super chat or our membership money and all that, the views we gave them, the comments, the love, the attention, the recommendations, the word of mouth, sharing all the videos, did all of that income, which could be more than $3 million or more. Uh, One of the former teammates spoke about Jarrett bragging about making two to $300,000 a month off of Adventures with Purpose, which would, if it's 300,000 a month, I don't know if that includes merch, YouTube income sponsors, he's losing sponsors. That's more than $3 million in one year. How exactly, how much of that went towards finding victims? We would see a lot of the dramatics in the videos. Oh, this broke down, that broke down. We need a new this, we need a new that. It takes money and I understand that's why I didn't mind contributing to them, but now I see, oh no, how much of it really went towards victims, you know, finding those victims and how much of it went into Jared's home. Not to say people who work hard don't deserve a nice home. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying it just seemed like this whole ruse, the greatest showman on earth, the things I appreciated about Jarrett Lysick, but those things now I can see in my mind, a lot of showmanship. I appreciated his showmanship and the way he, not disrespecting grieving families, but the way the channel was edited and the way it brought attention to cases so that people would care about the missing. So it would be something they wanted to watch and the dramatics and everything. But now I see just how wrong a lot of that was. If the goal and the aim was just to raise the revenue, raise the net income, and if it was going mainly toward Jared, and if it wasn't toward altruistic reasons and the way he responded to his cousin here, he doesn't seem repentant, maybe partially repentant by even admitting it. Thank God he did that. And these emails are what caused the cousin to have enough proof to take it to court so that, you know, a grand jury can look at it and say, oh yeah, there's enough here to indict him on these charges. Will he serve any time? Will he be found guilty or not? Time will tell, but boy, this case, 
I think it was meant to be exposed. His admission, the emails, and everyone leaving him and falling away and telling their truth, it was all meant to be exposed because maybe Jared really isn't experiencing true repentance. If he had truly repented to his cousin and truly maybe felt sorry for what he did and maybe the way he's treated different loved ones of family members. And now I see the whole Kylie Rodney case as something different. I'm so grateful they still found her. I'm grateful Adventures with Purpose recovered her. But now I see more of what Kylie's mom saw in them. And I don't think Adventures with Purpose should have that $75,000 reward. I used to trust in, oh, that money could be reinvested into more equipment, finding more missing people. They were, in our mind, in a way like the heroes. If you saw someone missing, and especially in a body of water, it was like, get Adventures with Purpose on it. You know, I wanted them to be able to build out so many teams that they could just go all over the nation and help find missing people. But hopefully other people can take up the charge and there are a lot of other folks out there, you know, we're learning about some that I knew about, didn't know about, chaos divers, all these others, which I'll try and link to, which hopefully can pick up the mantle, but not in the same way. They can still make it interesting, but don't create drama, don't create, you know, fake searches. It's good enough. And Jared was really good at being able to hold an audience. He could hold an audience for a three and a half hour live. And I know that's not easy. Hopefully someone else can do that authentically. Hopefully justice will be served and we'll see what it looks like. And if Jared truly, truly is repentant one day to come back in a different form, some way where he's truly, truly helping others and not allegedly lining his pocket or just wearing some kind of narcissistic mask. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned.